Winds out of the southwest at 4 knots, a launch time temperature of 67 degrees Fahrenheit overall. The weather officer at Wallop says we are 90% go for launch this evening. Good evening from our anchor post at Mission Control here in Houston and the International Space Station Flight Control Room at the Johnson Space Center. Flight controllers here are monitoring their consoles, watching over the station, its systems, and the three crew members comprising the Expedition 63 crew. More on them in a moment. Back at the Wallops Flight Facility in Virginia, Northrop Grumman engineers are monitoring the countdown of this hour from the range control center that you see there and will be in control of the nine-minute climb to orbit for the two-stage Antares rocket from liftoff to Cygnus' spacecraft separation from the vehicle's second stage. Up the road from Wallops in Dulles, Virginia, another team of Northrop Grumman engineers are on duty as well, ready to take over the flight of Cygnus after spacecraft separation. They are under the lead tonight of Mission Director Zach Dwyer. Here at Mission Control in Houston, the Orbit 3 team of flight controllers is on duty with the station crew members well into their sleep period for the night. Flight Director and former astronaut T.J. Creamer is presiding over the Orbit 3 team this evening. This past Sunday, the Antares rocket and the encapsulated Cygnus cargo craft rolled out from its integration building at Wallops to the Oceanside launch pad to receive late cargo loading and to be rotated vertically for final pre-launch processing. As you probably know by now, the launch was originally scheduled for Tuesday night, but a forecast of inclement weather at Wallops for both Tuesday and Wednesday pushed this initial launch attempt to this evening. Now we're sitting at T-minus 35 minutes, 55 seconds and counting. All systems are go for launch. No issues being worked by the flight control teams and uh, the launch control teams at Wallops. As has become the custom for Northrop Grumman, each Cygnus resupply craft is named after a noted space explorer who contributed to the cause of human space exploration. The Cygnus being launched tonight is named for NASA astronaut Kalpna Chavla, who twice flew into space on the STS-87 mission aboard the space shuttle Columbia in 1997, and then on the ill-fated STS-107 mission aboard Columbia in 2003, in which she and her six crewmates lost their lives during entry. Kalpna Chavla honored on this mission of Cygnus to the International Space Station. Verify local indicator eliminated. LCFs one launch enabled and illuminated. And GSO step 348, enable your local launch enable button at the failsafe panel. Verify local indicators illuminated. GSO, launch enabled and illuminated. Copy that. We'll check steps 347. And As mentioned earlier, the Antares rocket being launched tonight is a two-stage rocket to propel the Cygnus cargo craft to its preliminary orbit, beginning the chase to reach the International Space Station in the wee hours Sunday morning. With us this evening by phone to discuss Antares and its nine-minute ride from the launch pad is Christina Halona, the Northrop Grumman Antares Systems Engineering Program Manager. Christina, thanks for joining us tonight. Good to be with you. Thank you for having me, Rob. I'm excited to be here, and welcome to all the viewers watching. Looking forward to a successful Antares launch and a Cygnus mission to the International Space Station. Inside 34 minutes until liftoff, and uh, if you would... Christina, walk us through Antares' launch and its climb to orbit step-by-step. Step. Sure. So after uh, post-launch from, uh, from Wallops there, Cygnus will separate from the Antares rocket approximately nine minutes after launch. Uh, the spacecraft will then begin initializing the uh, propulsion system and uh, various avionics components. Uh, the solar array deployment will start approximately two hours after separation, and then once that is complete, uh, Cygnus will continue catching up to the International Space Station in preparation for bursting on Saturday morning around 5.15 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Christina, um, this is called a 230-plus model of the Antares rocket. Tell us a little bit about its capability and what Northrop Grumman envisions for Antares in the future. 
Rob. Um, prior to NG12, uh, that was um, we had 230 um, configuration, and that it was a little bit. Um, we had to go a little bit lighter and uh, took some things off and improved a lot of our mass issues. Um, so 230 plus is we can carry more cargo, and um, we're also getting very light as far as the things that we're we're building onto the rocket. And uh, we're looking forward uh, to have 230 plus through NG17, and um, and looking forward to uh, taking more cargo to the International Space Station in the future. Christina Halona of Northrop Grumman with us this evening by phone as the countdown for Cygnus' launch now stands at T-minus 32 minutes and counting. At the time of launch at 8.38 and 44 seconds p.m. Central Time, 9.38.44 Eastern Time, the International Space Station and its three residents will be flying 258 miles over the Atlantic off the northeast coast of Brazil. Atlantis or uh, in Terry's, I should say, and Cygnus will follow a familiar flight path launching to the southeast from Wallops to start the rendezvous that will lead to its robotic capture on Sunday morning. The two robotic uh, astronauts who will uh, be in charge of capturing Cygnus uh, after its three-day journey from the launch pad are station commander Chris Cassidy of NASA. He will be backed up by Russian cosmonaut Ivan Wagner. Cassidy, Wagner, and Russian cosmonaut Anatoly Ivanishin are asleep at this hour, beginning the final three weeks of their six-and-a-half-month mission on the orbital outpost. They uh, are planning to return to Earth on October 21st, U.S. time, October 22nd, Kazakhstan time, on their Soyuz MS-16 spacecraft, heading for a parachute-assisted uh, landing on the steppe of Kazakhstan to wrap up uh, a mission of six and a half months aboard the International Space Station. That will come after an eight-day handover from the next trio of residents to launch from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan to the International Space Station, including NASA astronaut Kate Rubens and Russian cosmonauts Sergei Ryzhikov and Sergei Kud Sverchkov, who are in the final stages of training down at the Baikonur Cosmodrome. Their launch is scheduled just after midnight central time on October 14th. 30 minutes now until liftoff. Uh, and, and Terry's is in great shape on the launch pad. No issues being worked uh, by the launch control team at uh, Wallops Island. Team LC, countdown one, we're at T-minus 30 minutes to our target T-zero. Step 353, pull for final FTS power on and arm command test. Safety? Safety is go. FSO? FSO is go. Ops one? Ops one is go. Elect two? Elect two is go. We are go for final FTS power on and arm command test. FSO, step 354, bring up command transmitter, transmitter with check channel on. And work. The uh, launch conductor, Ed Wallops, uh, with uh, an intermediate pole of his team uh, in the range control center, all uh, positions polling go. The uh, flight control team here at Mission Control in Houston also has been polled and has relayed uh, their uh, go status to the uh, teams uh, both at Wallops and at Dulles, Virginia, which again will take over control of the flight of Cygnus uh, once uh, it separates from the second or upper stage of the Antares rocket. LC FSO, Wallops command site is on, check channel radiating. Copy that FSO and Ops 1, step 355, apply external power to FTSA and FTSB. LC Ops 1, FTSA, external power on, FTSB, external power on. Amongst uh, the supplies being carried as part of the four tons of supplies and scientific experiments to the International Space Station is uh, a variety of food for the expedition crew members, not only the departing Expedition 63 crew, but the uh, oncoming Expedition 64 crew, some of the goodies being carried up uh, aboard uh, the SS Kulpna Chavla to the International Space Station include uh, brie cheese, several uh, varieties of smoked gouda and provolone, uh, prosciutto, chorizo, dark chocolate covered cranberries, Genoa salami, and summer sausage. 
some of that uh, requested specifically by uh, the uh, Expedition 64 crew, Kate Rubin, Sergei Rizhikov, Sergei Kud Sverchkov, and uh, the next crew to launch on SpaceX's Crew Dragon, currently scheduled uh, for the early morning hours of October 31st. That crew uh, will be launching on a 25 hour trajectory from uh, Launch Pad 39A at the Kennedy Space Center to reach the International Space Station in the early morning hours of November 1st. Arm indication received. FTS currently indicates safe. And FSO verify FTS arm indication. FSO had arm indication. LC, I like two. FTS safe and arm and FTLU safe. And I copy all. And that uh, complete steps uh, 361, 362, and 363. For the uh, flight profile of uh, Antares as it heads uphill uh, to the uh, point of its preliminary orbit uh, dropping off Cygnus uh, in its preliminary orbit some nine minutes after launch, uh, we'll be hearing uh, these performance calls from uh, the uh, Range Control Center at uh, Wallops Island, Virginia. Uh, the main engine cutoff uh, for the first stage of uh, Antares will come at about the three minute, 18 second mark followed about six seconds later by stage one separation, and 30 seconds after that by fairing separation, which will expose uh, the Cygnus uh, resupply craft uh, to the environment uh, heading uphill for the remainder of the nine minute ride to its preliminary orbit. Stage two ignition is scheduled at about the four minute, seven second mark into the flight. That will be about a two minute, 44 second uh, burn of the stage two engine. Uh, following uh, that, at the six minute 51 second mark, we'll have stage two burnout and orbital insertion, followed uh, two minutes and 18 seconds later by uh, Cygnus's separation from the second stage. And as you heard from Christina Halona earlier uh, in our interview with her, uh, it will be about two hours or so after launch where the commands will be given to begin uh, the deployment of Cygnus's Ultraflex solar arrays. That's about a 30 minute procedure. We will not be on the air for solar array deploy. We will be standing by to monitor it, however, and we'll report the results of solar array deploy on uh, our website at uh, nasa.gov. 25 minutes until launch, everything going smoothly. T minus 25 minutes to our target T0. Step 364, report readiness for recalibration of engine pressure sensors, MES2. LC MES2, ready for engine pressure sensor recal. EHS1. EHS1 is go. And we're ready for engine pressure sensor recal, Ops1. Recalibrate engine pressure sensors. LC Ops 1 and work. LC Ops 1, engine pressure sensors recalibrated and ready for flight. Copy that, Ops 1, check 365. Flop 2, LC, countdown 1, step 366, plus place OCCS in the SAC mode and pause HSS ASC. Uh, LC prop two in work. And LC prop two HSS ASC is paused. And your go uh, to uh, configure EHS RP valve for final countdown. And copy that opening valve 8021 on my mark three, two, one, mark. And LC, prop lead, EHS, RP configured for final countdown. Copy that, prop lead. We'll check 368 complete. Prop 2, resume HSS ASC. There will be one final poll uh, for readiness to proceed with the terminal countdown that will be coming up shortly. At the uh, T-minus 3 minute 30 second mark, uh, the uh, range control center engineers will be initiating an auto sequence handoff that will initiate the terminal count for Antares leading to a launch once again at 8.38 and 44 seconds p.m. Central Time, 9.38.44 Eastern Time. Step 372, arm tail for rapid retract. 
LC site control, tell arm for rapid retract. The TEL is the uh, acronym for Transporter Erector Launcher. That's basically the gantry that you see buttressed up against the side of uh, Antares as it stands on Launch Pad 0A at the Mid-Atlantic Regional Spaceport at Wallops Island, Virginia. And LC, countdown one. LC, TEL, go ahead. Yeah, step 373. Uh, rapid Reprotect Army is at work. Okay, copy that. I'll wait for your call on that. GNC-1 LC Step 374 provides status of upper-level winds. LC, GNC-1, upper-level winds are go. Copy, upper-level winds are go. We'll check Step 374 complete. One interesting note uh, about uh, this particular mission of Cygnus to the International Space Station, as we mentioned, uh, this vehicle named by Northrop Grumman uh, after uh, the late uh, NASA astronaut Kulpna Chavla, who lost her life in the Columbia accident on February 1, 2003. She was the first NASA astronaut of uh, South Asian and Indian descent. The lead NASA flight director for this mission, Pooja Jasrani, who will be on console Sunday morning for the rendezvous and capture of uh, Cygnus, also of Indian descent and South Asian descent. So the symmetry of history coming into focus uh, with uh, Pooja Jasrani, who will be in uh, mission control here in Houston. Once uh, Cygnus uh, reaches orbit, uh, a series of uh, pre-programmed engine firings uh, on the vehicle uh, will uh, begin uh, the three-day rendezvous to catch up to the International Space Station. The uh, Cygnus will arrive uh, at a point uh, just directly underneath the station early Sunday morning and then will inch its way up what is called the R-bar, or the radial vector, the imaginary line drawn between the International Space Station and the Earth, to a point uh, at which Chris Cassidy, uh, backed up by Russian cosmonaut uh, Ivan Wagner, working from the uh, Cupola workstation, the robotics workstation in the Cupola, will extend uh, the Canadian-built Canada Arm II robotic arm to grapple uh, the grapple fixture on Cygnus, at which point uh, the operations will be turned over to ground controllers here in Mission Control who will maneuver Cygnus uh, to its installation point on the Earth-facing port of the Unity module where it will be bolted into place and will remain at the station until mid-December. Coming up on the T-minus 19-minute mark into the countdown. No issues being worked right now by the uh, launch control team at the Wallops Flight Facility in Virginia. The countdown at Wallops continues to proceed uh, without any issues being worked as we approach the 17 and a half minute mark until liftoff. 
Once again, uh, at the time of liftoff, uh, the International Space Station and its three residents, Station Commander Chris Cassidy of NASA and Russian cosmonauts Anatoly Ivanishin and Ivan Wagner will be uh, flying 258 miles over the Atlantic Ocean off the northeast coast of Brazil. They have been uh, aboard the International Space Station since April, just three weeks away from completing a six and a half month mission on the orbital outpost. And Terry's is fully fueled, ready to take flight. No issues being worked. Everything very quiet on the loops right now. Yeah, LC, this is prop lead. Actual F1N level is 12 of 12. And LC, this is prop lead, step 381, actual F1N level is 12 of 12. Okay, copy that, uh, 12 of 12. Core 1 LC, step 382, uh, can you uh, provide status on F1N level? Core 1 LC, countdown 1. Uh, LC Core 1 on Countdown 1, can you stand by? Yeah, A-Firm, uh, let's make it quick. CMD LC, Countdown 1. CMD LC, Countdown 1. I'll see this is CMD. Yes, yeah, CMD, you go for step 385, transfer signals to launch mode. I'll see CMD in work. Copy and work. LC, uh, Core 1 on Countdown 1. Go ahead, Core 1. Uh, fuel level adjustment is not required. Copy that. Fuel level does not require adjustment. And Prop 2, configure OCCS for no adjustment to fuel level. LC, Prop 2, in work. And properly be advised, step 384 is not required. Launch engineers uh, monitoring the fuel levels uh, on the uh, Antares rocket. Everything seems to be in excellent shape as we approach the 14 minute mark until liftoff. The International Space Station currently uh, traveling on a northwest to southeast trajectory, having just passed over Washington, D.C., in an orbit inclined 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator. They hold at T minus 11 minutes. Uh, again, we're going to go ahead and implement a hold at T minus 11 minutes. That will be a CDT hold time of 012745. TD, you copy? TD copies off. And admin, you copy? Correct. Hold number one on your matrix. Admin copies hold. And prop two, can I get status on step 383? And LC, this is prop two on countdown one. Uh, we are working an issue, the wrong button was selected. Um, we are in talks with admin currently. Copy that. LCTD on countdown one, range is green for wind drifted debris and toxic for the whole window. 
All right, copy that. Uh, TD, we're going to go ahead and implement our hold at T-minus 11 uh, regardless. TD, copies off. Please advise with the pickup time for the clock. Yeah, we'll go. Our resume time will be 013244. How copy? TD copies 013244 Zulu. That's a good read back. Okay, launch team, we are uh, going to go ahead and hold the clock at the T minus 11 minutes. Uh, we have not proceeded with our poll with the final countdown, working a couple of late issues here. Uh, we have um, directed Cygnus to put themselves in launch mode. Uh, so they'll report back on that, and we're also in our helium topping at this time. And we'll get additional status out here uh, as it becomes available. And as you heard uh, from the launch control team at the range uh, control center in Wallops, we're going to go into a uh, hold at T minus 11 minutes, just about 40 seconds from now, as they evaluate uh, wind direction that uh, would come into play in the unlikely event of a launch accident that would take toxic fuel into the wrong direction uh, of personnel working at the Wallops flight facility. If everything goes as planned, uh, we expect uh, to be able to pick up the count uh, to reach the end of this five-minute launch window. There is only a five-minute launch window available for any launch attempt for Antares and the Cygnus spacecraft. We're currently in our four-minute, 59-second hold, trying to resolve a couple of issues here. Uh, we'll provide status in a second. The uh, launch window expires at uh, 8.43 and 44 seconds p.m., 9.43.44 p.m. Eastern Time. So we'll be standing by for further words from the launch conductor at Wallops. Once again, uh, we are standing by for further word from the Range Control Center at Wallops on uh, picking up the count to reach the end of this five-minute launch window, which uh, would expire at uh, 8.43.44 p.m. Central Time, 9.43.44 p.m. Eastern. that uh, we'll go ahead and check 387 complete. Okay, uh, launch team LC countdown one. I do want to go ahead and get our poll to proceed with our final countdown started here. I understand we might get some go pendings and uh, I know that uh, both prop lead and uh, GC are off working some issues right now, but I want to get goes or go pendings on our poll to proceed with final countdown. Our planned pickup time is at 013244, and that's in uh, just over two minutes. GSO? GSO, go. RSO? RSO is go. TD? TD is go. Stage one? Uh, stand by, LC. MES-1. MES-1 is go. ACE. ACE is go. And MARS? MARS is go. And everybody else can stand by.
Just under two minutes left uh, before the countdown would need to resume to reach the end of tonight's five-minute launch window. Standing by for further word from Wallops. Okay, launch team, uh, we're going to be picking up the count in just uh, over a minute here. Again, our new target T0 time will occur at 014344 UTC. That's 014344 UTC. Ops 2, LC. Go ahead, LC. Yeah, be advised, we're going to delay start of engine evac until I give you direction to do so. Copy that. LC, stage one is go. Okay, copy. I've got stage one go. Standing by for the resumption of the countdown to reach the end of the launch window with the new T0 time for liftoff at 8.43.44 p.m. Central Time. Now we're hearing that there, the reason for this uh, brief delay is a uh, boat out in the range. The range believes uh, it uh, will be clear just a moment or two from now. Okay, I want to complete our poll to proceed with final countdown. Prop lead, countdown one. Prop lead is go pending uh, 1914 reading dry. Copy that prop lead, GC. Copy that. CMD. CMD is go. LD. LD is go. NG. In honor of Kalpana Chavla, who inspired millions of people as the first woman of Indian descent to fly into space, Northrop Grumman is go. Copy that. We are going to proceed with final countdown. Ops 2, you're go for step 389. Start engine evac. LC Ops 2, engine evacuation started. The range now clear at Wallops. Everything in good shape at the uh, T minus 10 minute mark. Liftoff now scheduled at 8.43 and 44 seconds p.m. Eastern Time, 9.43.44 Eastern Time. Ops 1, LC, countdown 1. Go ahead, LC. Yeah, step 391, enable ACS VDMs. Countdown uh, underway, T minus 9 minutes and counting. VDMs, internal power on. The range is clear at Wallops, and Terry's in great shape, Cygnus ready to fly. VDMs enabled, voltage nominal, ODM commands clear. Copy that, elect 1, check 392, launch team be advised, step 393 is not required for today's operation. Site control, wait for your call on 394. LC MES-1, step 390, vacuum verified. Copy that, MES-1, check step 390 complete. T minus eight minutes and counting. LC site control, GN2 positioning initiated. Copy that site control, step, uh, check step 394. And 
Prop 308 for your call on step 395. Copy that, Oscar. As the International Space Station approaches the northeast coast of South America, we're coming up on the 7 minute 20 second mark into the countdown. LC, this is top three on countdown one. Go. I can confirm the 395 BTSO activation verified. Copy that. Check 395. Off two, step 396. Initialize ground ordinance power supplies. LC, off two. Ground ordinance power supplies initialized. Ground ordinance power supplies nominal. Copy all. Check 396 and 397. T minus six minutes and counting. In about two and a half minutes, uh, the ground sequencer will initiate the auto sequence handoff of the terminal count. Roger that. Site control will check step 398 complete. And Ops 2, LC, countdown 1, step 399, you're good, initiate engine priming. LC, Ops 2, in, engine priming started. Ops 1, you're good to transfer avionics to internal power. LC, Ops 1, avionics internal power on, stand by 5. Once again, uh, Cygnus, uh, once it reaches its preliminary orbit, will... Uh, undergo a series of pre-programmed uh, engine burns in the rendezvous profile that will take it to the International Space Station for its capture early Sunday morning. Capture scheduled at 5.10 a.m. Central Time, 6.10 a.m. Eastern Time. Chris Cassidy using the Canadarm2 robotic arm to grapple on to the uh, Cygnus cargo craft for its uh, ground-controlled robotic installation on the Earth-facing port of the Unity module. T minus four minutes and counting. That's TD step four oh six, report range status. LC T D range is green. Copy range green. LC priming verified. Copy, we have priming verified. Check step uh, four oh seven complete. And Terry's uh, soon uh, to create a uh, artificial dawn on a night in which there's a full moon overhead, about to arc out uh, to the southeast from the Wallops Flight Facility on its path to uh, deliver Cygnus to its preliminary orbit. FC commanded to flight mode. Copy, like one. Auto sequence start. RDM voltages and currents nominal. TNC one verify ready for nav mode. Terminal count underway. Ready for nav mode. Nav mode. 
Ops 2, 414, switch to nav. Or and nav, switch to navigate. And LC, this is a uh, prop lead. We are LCG in OTCS automated abort. Nav, tell them to verify. Is launch team on countdown one, abort, abort. Is LC on countdown one, abort, abort. We will be proceeding with uh, abort safing 88-9. That's abort safing 8-9. And as you heard, we have an abort, no launch tonight. Standing by for further words from Wallops. The launch was scrubbed at the T minus two minute, 21 second mark. Uh, YouTube, go to disable on Alpha 3, disable using OE embedded data stream. And data stream is suspended. And core one direct use no way to restart their MS session report when complete. And work. Copy and work. As that uh, proceeding, let's press with abort safing seven, step alpha six, ops one, disable your local launch enable button, and verify indicator extinguished. LC ops one, launch enable removed. And GSO step alpha seven, disable your local launch enable button at fail safe panel and verify local indicator extinguished. GSO, GSO launch enable removed. Copy that. Ops one, step alpha eight, verify removal of master global launch enable. Removal of master global launch enable verified. Copy that. Ops one and alpha nine, deactivate your arm enable to fail safe panel. Arm enable key rotated and arm enable no longer illuminated. Okay, roger that. To recap, uh, uh, step alpha 10, report engine priming status. The Antares rocket is in the process of being saved after the launch was scrubbed at the T minus two minute, 21 second mark. For reasons uh, that we're standing by to find out from the range control center at Wallops. This came after a brief uh, hold in the countdown to allow a boat to, to clear from the range. The countdown had been proceeding uh, normally otherwise, so we're standing by for further words from Wallops. Assuming a 24-hour recycle... Yes, to a, um, steps A11 and 12 are not required. A100 through 104 are required. Okay, MES-2, I copy that, and uh, specific to Alpha-10, we have uh, priming initiated. Can you verify if that's complete? Assuming a 24-hour recycle for another launch attempt uh, tomorrow night, Friday night, launch time tomorrow would be 8.16 and 12 seconds p.m. Central Time, 9.16 and 12 seconds p.m. Eastern, assuming a 24-hour recycle. Of course, we're standing by for further official word yeah, from you know, Wallops. Can you uh, give me the uh, specific priming status where we're at on one of those four uh, step, uh, check marks there? Yes, priming complete, FIV closed. Okay, copy that, thanks, MES2. And Ops 1 LC, countdown one. Go ahead, LC. Yeah, let's go ahead and safe our vehicle SMAs and the vehicle and ground ODMs and verify ODM safe. And work. Once again, uh, we're standing by for further word from Wallops. The countdown uh, was halted. Vehicle safe and arms and vehicle and ground ODM safe. Copy that, Ops 1. The countdown was halted at the T minus 2 minute 21 second mark by the auto sequencer at uh, Wallops on launch pad 0A at the Mid Atlantic Regional Spaceport. We're standing by for further word as to what uh, triggered the uh, abort in the countdown. And 
LEC 1 LC. Yeah, stage 2 ignition and aura SNA safe. Back computer ODM safe. Stage 1 controller ODM safe. Ground ODMs are safe. Copy all there. LEC 1 will check uh, Alpha 14 complete. Ops 1 step Alpha 15. Close your FTS umby loop and verify red indication. FTS umby loop closed and red. Cap that Ops 1. Ops 2, you're going to reset your ground ODM power supply. LC Ops 2, ground ODM power supply reset. FTS ANV, SNAs are safe. Copy, like one, we'll check Alpha 16 and Alpha 17. And in site control, wait for your call in Alpha 18. LC site control, FBA G and 2 flow stopped. FBA airflow resumed. Okay, site control, copy that. We'll go ahead and check uh, Alpha 18 complete. And core 1 LC countdown 1. LC countdown one. LC uh, core one's tied up with Yuzhnoya. Okay, copy that. Uh, thanks, page one. Okay, launch team uh, moving into abort safing six. Uh, we've already performed uh, step uh, alpha 19. Uh, we've performed step alpha 20, alpha 21. Site control, LC, step alpha 22, you go to disarm, tell rapid retract system. LC, site control, tell rapid retract, disarm is active. Copy that, site control. LC, core one on a countdown one. Yeah, core one uh, looking for status on the restart of the MS session. MS session is restarted. Copy that, Core 1, we'll check Alpha 4, and TLM, you go for Alpha 5, enable Yuzhnoya data stream, turn on Yuzhnoya embedded stream output to the MS data recording workstation. Data stream enabled. Copy all there, we'll check Alpha 5, uh, alpha five complete. Okay, launch team resuming with uh, board safing 6, uh, TLM, step Alpha 23, you go to the stop and uh, restart telemetry archiving. Copy that, LC. Archiving stopped and restarted. Copy that, TLM. Check Alpha 23 complete. Ops 1, step Alpha 24. Transfer FTSA and FTSB to external power. LC, Ops 1, FTSA and B external power on, FTSA and B internal power off. Roger that. We'll check Alpha 24 complete. And Ops 1, step Alpha 25, transfer avionics power to external. And work. LC Ops 1. Avionics external power on, avionics internal power off. Copy all ops one and CMD LC countdown one. Now see the CMD. Yeah, step alpha 26. Uh, your team's go to proceed with transferring Cygnus back to external power and you will report when complete. Now see CMD and work. Copy and work. Ops one, step alpha 27. Disable ME1 and ME2, TVC and EHA buses. LC Ops 1 and work. This is Mission Control Houston. Um, standing by for uh, more details on uh, what triggered the uh, countdown abort at the T minus.
two minute 21 second mark uh, before Ann Terry's was scheduled to lift off. The uh, preliminary uh, indication is uh, that uh, the problem uh, was attributed to a piece of ground support equipment, not the rocket itself, not Antares, not Cygnus, but a piece of ground support equipment. Uh, engineers at Wallops are working to verify as they look at the data and uh, determine whether or not uh, we, in fact, will make another attempt tomorrow night as is hoped. Copy that. I'll see you in work. And DCOM is configured for closed loop telemetry. And uh, TLM, I copy that. Uh, at this time, uh, launch team, I want to poll for FTS power off. Elect two. Elect two is go. And GSO. GSO go. And FSO. FSO go. Or go for FTS power off. Ops 1, remove FTS power. FTSA, external power off. FTSB, external power off. FTS power off. Okay, copy all. And step out the 33 FSO, your go to secure CT site and verify RF silence. And work. FSO, CT site keyed down, RF sounds verified. Okay, FSO, I copy that. We'll check step uh, Alpha 33 complete. This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, to recap, uh, tonight's launch attempt uh, for Northrop Grumman's and Terry's rocket. Uh, launch team LC, we're at the Step Alpha 34, abort safing 6. Uh, we did have an automated abort occur. Uh, abort occurred approximately at the T minus uh, 2 minutes and uh, 40 seconds. And uh, we are currently investigating uh, what the cause of that uh, automated abort is, and we'll report out when that's available. Okay, we'll proceed now with our post LO2 board reconfiguration. And uh, TLM Alpha 35 is not going to be required since uh, we just went ahead and did a, a archiving restart. Concur. And Ops 1, step out for 36. You go to remove external power from the transmitters and SMI buses. LC Ops 1, stage 1 telemetry transmitter, external power off. Motor cone transmitter, external power off. Avionics telemetry transmitter, external power off. SMI power A, external power off. And B, external power off. Okay, copy all ops one, elect one, verify transmitter power off. Transmitters are off. Roger that. Uh, NASA PM step alpha 38. You can cease CVAN interrogation and turn off your TAM recorders. This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, to recap, tonight's launch attempt uh, for Northrop Grumman's and Terry's rocket uh, to send the 
Cygnus resupply craft to the International Space Station uh, was scrubbed about two minutes and 40 seconds before liftoff uh, due to uh, an unknown uh, problem with what appears to be a, a component of a ground support equipment, not the rocket itself, not the Cygnus spacecraft itself, but a piece of ground support equipment. Uh, that is under investigation as the, the Northrop Grumman engineers at the Range Control Center at Wallops Island, Virginia, uh, pour over the data and uh, make a determination as to whether or not uh, we can make a, another launch attempt tomorrow with a 24-hour recycle. Copy that and Mark. If, in fact, uh, the problem is uh, minor and uh, can be corrected to permit a launch attempt on Friday night. And uh, engine bottle charging. The launch time uh, on Friday would be 8.16 p.m. Central Time, 9.16 p.m. Eastern Time, resulting in Cygnus arriving at the International Space Station in the early morning hours of Monday, October 5th. Roger that, uh, admin, and this is a uh, handwrite step alpha 41 decimal one prop lead return OCS, uh, OCS to automatic control. Yeah, OCCS is an auto control mode. Okay, copy that. And uh, standby, launch team. Uh, 